Happy Little Landscapes back in the studio with you today. Welcome back to all you regulars and all you newcomers. Hey now, let's put some paint on our palettes, get our aprons out, and we're going to get ready to make a mess. So if you're ready to rock and roll, we're going to get started and we're going to do it just like this. Hey guys, Josh, Happy Little Landscapes back again today in the new studio. I'm really liking it. I'm really liking where it's taking my work and the quality of the stuff that we're putting out that we're in this stress-free space, right? I love it. So today we came back with an 18 by 24 inch canvas. These crazy, you guys know me. I don't just paint this nice, soft little stuff. I love this crazy, like scraggly arm of it, you know, this nightmare bush that's gonna reach out. The one that taps on your window at night, like from that movie Poltergeist, right? I love painting spooky stuff. So this painting, super thick, super textured. You'll be able to feel everything once it's dry. And I love thick textured paintings like that. You'll be able to see it from the side. You'll be able to come up and feel every little detail. So if that's something that you're interested in and you like painting like Josh does, right? Then this is the perfect video for you. I'm gonna show you what colors you need. There's only about five and about five brushes or tools that we use today. And uh, you can check the description down below if you don't have any of the brushes or the tools. You can go to amazon.com slash shop slash happy landscape art right down there in the description and uh, get you pick up your stuff in order to paint, right? So we're going to stop wasting time and we're going to get to it and we're going to do it just like Hey guys, today we've got uh, dark sienna, phthalo blue, alizarin crimson, midnight black, titanium white, bright red, and, uh, and Indian yellow. And I was just thinking to myself right before I turned the camera on that I probably... I might not go with the Indian yellow and the red. Maybe I'll have to use them somewhere throughout, but in the sky I was thinking of going like a blue sky, really dark and stormy blue sky. So if you guys are interested in that, you've already seen the photo. I haven't seen it yet. I haven't made it. Normally we make it, then we do the intro at the end so we can kind of, you know, recreate that. Well, I haven't seen it, so you guys are lucky, all right? All right, we're gonna go nuts crazy. I usually never paint a blue sky. It, they just, they're not very exciting to me. They're not very beautiful, but we're gonna paint this dramatic, crazy, stormy sky today, okay? So, we're gonna need a lot of uh, phthalo blue, alizarin crimson, and midnight black, and titanium white. It's gonna be a winter scene and get a lot, a lot of paint. I mean, look at, look at the size of the pile. <laughs> it's like three big squirts out of the tube. That's how much you gotta have, right? All right, so for our crazy sky, we're gonna go right into the black first, just midnight black, both sides of our two inch brush. We want the canvas to be really dark, okay? So let's get up in here. I love how this midnight black, when you put it in with the liquid white and it starts to blend, it turns into this like purplish color. I love that. Even without adding anything else, it turns into this purplish color. All right, so we've got a little bit of crimson with our phthalo blue, just sort of blending them in with the midnight black. Back and forth, gonna cut in front of you guys, we're gonna finish the sides, because we always finish the sides. And this is one of those big, thick, um, you know, pro-style canvases, okay? Speaking of which, while I've got it down, might as well do the top. For those keeping score, we got a new easel, right? Yay! Now the easel is a little bit too big, when it sits on top of my table and too short when it doesn't. So, gotta improvise, right? Gotta improvise. All right, now we got the top covered, we got our sides covered. I love this easel though. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. But you guys can find this exact easel, this Meaden, this giant easel uh, on uh, my Amazon shop, amazon.com slash shop slash happy landscape art, okay? You can find the brushes that we use, and the paint colors that we use, the brand, the different brands of paint, the brushes, the easel, the canvases. I literally have listed everything on that site. Everything that one might need in order to, you know, paint just like me. Look at this crazy sky, guys. This crazy sky. I'm gonna get a little bit more black and really just try to darken up these areas at the top. Just make it crazy, right? And we get a big bit of blue bit that comes in here. Just blend that out into the rest. And now we've got all these different colors. 
right? Because what does Josh like? Differences in color, guys. I'm gonna say it probably 15 times throughout this video. People like different colors. You don't just want all one blue sky or one color purple. You gotta mix all that stuff in there. And the trick is not to over mix it, right? You don't wanna, you wanna have this blue and the purple and the crimson and the black all throughout the thing. And even the little bits where it's lighter. You know what I mean? These bits of white over here. It's not intentional. Let the canvas tell you what to do. That's how I paint. That's how I paint. Okay, so let's get that same little mixture. Just grabbed all three of them on the brush at the same time. Let me make it hold it up and show you guys. A little bit of blue, a little bit of red, uh, crimson, a little bit of black. All right. And we're just gonna sort of mix it. Just like that. So we've done the whole canvas in this nice purpley color. Get our sides done. We're just gonna go back and forth. And we mix all these suckers out. But again, we're not gonna over mix, right? We wanna have these little lines, these little striations down here, these differences. This is what you wanna have down here. Okay, nothing has to be the same color. We've got differences in our sky, we've got differences in our water or snow or ground or whatever is down here. This provides the base shadow color for whatever you put down there. Now we got this whole beautiful canvas, nice and painted, and that's it, video's done, goodbye. Have a good day guys, see you later. If only it were that easy, right? This one is gonna be a recreation of a painting that we did that sold a few copies of, a few different versions of the painting. So this one's gonna be sort of purpley. Purpley and blacky. It's gonna be, it's gonna be good. A little bit more crimson and black up here. Just like that, got an awesome looking sky, guys. Come in and on the edges, let me just create these big honking stinking clouds. These crazy looking clouds. A little bit of black, a little bit of crimson, a little bit of blue. Why don't we do like these lines, I guess. We'll go up like this. We'll check this out, see what it looks like. If we don't like it. We can always change it, or we'll just remember for next time, hey, don't do that. Last time you did that, you didn't really like it. Let's gonna see if we can't get away with not washing the brush, okay? We're gonna come up, you can do this with your one inch brush or, you know, whatever brush you have. I like the two inch brush and the one inch brush for clouds. Right, very softly, just disturb what it looks like. Right, you can go one way, you can go back the other way. Just really just sort of disturbing the paint. Not trying to do anything crazy. Not trying to make a certain shape. We're just mixing it up. Just mix it up, okay? Now in this instance, we don't really have as much paint on there as I want, because we didn't grab enough. Go back and get some more, come back in, and again, just very lightly, just disturb it. Just barely touching it, right? And then we can take it and we can fluff them up all the way to the top, come to the side, and we've got our wicked little shadows, which you could leave just like that if you wanted to. It's completely up to you what you wanna do. But if you guys know me, you know that a cloud is a good place for a lot of details and a lot of good places to look. I love looking at clouds. So what we're gonna come do is go like this and just start dropping white in different places. It doesn't have to connect. And this is when we're thinking about the shape of what our cloud's gonna look like, right? The other ones are just shadows. Most of them will get covered. But this is what the shape of our cloud's gonna look like. So, Leave yourself room. 
is this white is going to expand. As soon as we start to blend it, it's gonna to start to expand, right? So leave yourself room for it to move. Like if we wanted to do this cloud up in the front, what I would do is make our shape and leave these kind of blank spaces in the middle like that. And that when we, when we go to blend it, it will fill in in different areas, be different brightnesses, different colors, because you guys know how I am about my colors. All right, we're gonna take our one inch brush and watch this magic happen, okay? Just barely going to touch it, just barely, right? Come back in, very lightly. I go counterclockwise circles. You can do whatever's more comfortable for you. You can switch and go the other way and back and forth and do whatever you like, okay? Just like that, and that's not even done. It's not even done yet, guys, okay? And it looks amazing like that. So we're gonna take this, and you can see why I've left this space in between, because we're gonna grab paint and bring it up. We're gonna grab paint and bring it down. We're gonna put our cloud over here for the buyer. If you wanna see what it looks like on the side of the canvas, you're gonna have to buy it. Let's see. See, we're bringing this up, bringing that down, and they're, all, they're, they're just mixing all by themselves, right? It's doing it all on its own. All you have to do is remember not to overdo it. That's it. Don't overdo it, because you can just blend this whole sucker right away. All right, we're gonna come back in. We'll fluff up these clouds, same like we did with the shadows, and come to the side. It just gets rid of all the brush marks, and it helps kind of flatten them down and push them far off into the distance, okay? And come to the Go up like this, right? Very lightly. I'm not really pushing on it. I don't want the clouds to disappear, right? So we're just very, like three hairs in some air, just like Bob said. It's barely any bit of my brush has any color on it, okay? Because we're not trying to push real hard. And just like that, we got this wicked dramatic cloud filled sky. Looking good, looking good. But I want a little bit more detail. And the way I get more detail is by adding shadows in. Okay, then we can take our shadows, and it's not a whole lot of color, right? But it's that difference, it's that little difference in color that you can see just from adding these two, three bits up here. The difference in color is what's gonna catch people's eye, and that's what's gonna make them wanna buy your painting. A little shadow in in different darker places. Just like so. You can use crimson, you can use blue. The blue always looks really nice, I think. Again, you just keep messing around with it until you like the way that they look, right? And the more blue and, and black that you put in there, the more kind of textured and, and more realistic, to me anyway, the clouds are going to look. You go look at a cloud, it's never just white all the time, right? You got all these different colors and different shadows and all that stuff. So don't paint them just white. Paint them how you see them outside of your house, right? That's what I try to do. In Las Vegas, we get some pretty awesome sunsets. Not a lot of snow, though. That's why I like to paint snowy scenes. All right, that's looking good to me. What we're going to do now is take up the same, our three favorite colors, crimson, black, and blue. I'm going to put those together. And you can use the phthalo blue or the Prussian blue. It doesn't matter which one. Today, we're on the phthalo blue only because it was the first blue that came out of the box. <laughs> if it would have been the Prussian blue, we would have used that. All right, I'm gonna get this semi-big chunk of paint all mixed up over here. Wipe our crazy knife off and go in for our favorite size 10 fan brush, okay? I love these bigger size fan brushes to make our shadows and then our, uh, our little micro size fan brushes to do the details. And if you don't have the micro size fan brushes, you can go to amazon.com slash shop slash happy landscape art and uh, pick yourself up a set. They're fantastic. I mean, you've seen my paintings, you've seen the trees from last week's video, or the week before that. 
whenever it was. You've seen that, and then you get all these little minute details that, you know, your bigger fan brush has a tough time doing. Okay, we're gonna take our paint, and we go straight down into it. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Please don't, please don't unfollow me. <laughs> all right, we're gonna come over here, and we're gonna start making our forest. So let's call it, I wanna leave a gap in between, so why don't we put, we got a couple that come off to the side that way. And then we're gonna start putting in our forest. Just by bouncing up and down. Right? And you can see where I've chosen to put it based on where our how far our clouds came down, right? We're just underneath our clouds right now. Yours it might be different. And all we're doing is just bashing the brush right into right into the canvas, okay? Which is just blending it. The more we do it, the more it'll blend itself out. And I want these kind of softer and a little bit further away because our ones that are closer are gonna be dark and, and uh, a lot closer to us. Okay, we're gonna take our two inch brush and swipe up from the bottom. It just kind of flattens all the paint down, gives some of your trees these nice sharp tops to them and uh, just makes it look really neat. And then we're gonna come back with our clean Bob Ross two inch brush, okay? And we're gonna start dabbing the canvas. Just like this. I, I don't wanna know where the ground is, where the fog ends. I don't wanna know. There we go, we're gonna make this bit foggy too because we're gonna have a big old tree coming in. All right, but I don't wanna be able to tell where my trees start a little bit of darker shadow in here. I don't want to know where they start. I don't want to know where they end. I want to have this foggy area back here where you just can't tell. Are the trees, do they come down, you know, this far? Are they much higher? Are they much, you know, taller? I don't want to know. I don't want you guys to know. Okay, so we make that nice soft fog back there. And then what we can do is get a little bit of our white. Throw that white back in there. And just really give us some cool foggy clouds, right? And we got this nice little foggy area where the, the fog's kind of rolling over. And you can see we're doing it very simply. It's not a, not a hard thing to do for sure. What I do want though, I want my water down here to be much darker. Much darker, just down here in the corner. And I'll show you the reason why when we get down there. Don't be impatient. You will know once we get down there. You will figure it out. Or if you've seen this painting before, you already know. All right, now we're gonna come back in, we're gonna make that same pile, but we're gonna make it a lot bigger. I need a lot more paint than our first initial pile because we're gonna have more trees, there's gonna be more paint on the canvas. And when you paint with Josh, I like to paint super textured, thick trees. So if you're gonna paint with me, get that whole tube of paint out and just put it over to the side and get ready to put it back on your palette because we're gonna use a lot. We are going to use a lot. And that way when we're finished, you will be able to feel the canvas. You know what I mean? A blind person can see what you painted if you use enough paint. You'll be able to feel what it, what it looks like, which is the good, the fun part to me. When you're walking down your hallway and you see all these little bits coming off of this paint, it's gonna make you wanna turn around and see what's on there. You know what I mean? Gotta see what's on there. All right, we're gonna load up this brush. And we're gonna make these giant trees over here. Let me do one. You're like, oh, Josh, what are you doing? Oh my God, don't do that. Why would you do such a thing? You will understand when I get done. I love these bigger canvases. 
on the side, like the pro side style ones, because then you could do your own little mini scene right on the side of the canvas. All right, we're gonna come in. Let's make a nice little sharp point to our tree up here. And then we're gonna come down, pushing upwards, right? We're using the, the corner of the brush. And by now, now all of our brushes, all of our bristles are actually touching the tree. You know what I mean? When you're doing it at the top, you don't want all the bristles touching at the top, otherwise you're gonna have these gigantic limbs that hang over the side. And nobody wants that. All right, we're gonna come in. And as I'm pushing and pulling away, I'm leaving all this paint, all this texture, right? You push the brush, it almost sticks to the canvas as you pull it away. And that's gonna leave me with all this nice, beautiful, thick texture that we're gonna use to catch people's eye. And then every time that we go fill in this texture with, with uh, highlight paint, it's gonna fill into all those little nooks and crannies that we've created. Which is gonna make it look more detailed and more awesome. So if you wanna paint an awesome tree, take it from old Josh and use a lot of paint, okay? Like more than you think you need, that's how much. Yeah, I know some of you are Bob Ross fans. If you actually look, like when you're watching his, his video, at how big the piles of paint are, especially on his giant palette, right? And if you're not using that much paint, your tree obviously is not gonna come out the same as, uh, as what he's made up there because he's used, you know, he had an unlimited supply of paint. He's like the luckiest guy ever. Never had to worry about paint. You always have enough paint, right? But uh, yeah, he uses a ginormous pile of paint to make his trees. And as soon as I figured that out and started using more paint, I mean, I've got the little tiny, you know, it's not tiny, but it's the little palette, right? The little palette, I just want to use a gigantic, huge palette. But even on here, I've got to come back every so often and, you know, get more on my brush or put more on the palette because I know I need all this texture in my trees. I love these thick canvases on the side. You can just wrap around a whole little mini scene. I'm gonna make this one much taller, look at that. All right, my own little mini scene of my tree over here. For the buyer only, if you wanna see what it looks like, you're gonna have to buy it. Here we go, perfect. Okay. What was I saying now? Nobody knows. You can see the fog, you can see the trees. It's looking pretty good right now. What we're gonna do is take a little bit of our brown and white, just a little bit, really mix it up, cut it through, and then we're gonna come back in and just put a couple bits of tree trunk in these guys back here, just holding everything up. like that. I like to touch and pull away and whatever sticks is going to stick. Or you can take it and, you know, drag it over like we did on some of these other ones. But if you get it to touch and stick and pull it away, it'll actually feel like real bark when you go to touch it when it's dry. Which again, texture is my big thing. So if you guys like textured paintings, stick with me, right? All right, so we got all of our fog back there. I have to cut you guys off for a second because the glare on the canvas here. All of our fog, we're gonna mix up some stuff down here while we got our brush all dirty, right? All we're doing is just dragging this stuff down a little bit. Just dragging it down, right? And all we wanna do is have that little bit of fog, little foggy mist right underneath these trees so we can put some more bushes under there, right? And it kind of helps <clears throat> create this look that we're going for. So again, we're gonna have to go back to the paint box. You amateur Josh, I have to go back to the box to get more paint out because I forgot just how thick and textured these paintings are. All right, we're gonna come in with that Bob Ross 
half round, the little small foliage brush, okay? And we're just gonna come, we're gonna dab it into that big giant thing of paint. And you can see, I don't know how well you can see, but if you see all that texture, that's what your canvas should look like. You wanna have all that texture coming off your brush and sticking onto the canvas, right? Let me pop a little bush out over here. Again, we create that fog, so now this, this bunch of bushes can have a lot of texture, right? You can't do this much texture on top of that much texture. That's why we create that little, that little bank of fog in there. All right, we'll come in. Maybe this guy comes up a bit higher. Or maybe down a bit lower. Never know. Now we got all these giant bushes. <clears throat> at the base of all of our trees. And I know it may be hard to see. It looks good in this camera. I'm not sure about this camera. But it may be hard to see until we go and highlight the suckers, okay? What I wanna do is just put a little bit of fogginess just in between and a little bit around on these guys. There we go. Oh, you know what? We forgot the side. Can't forget the side. Stick a bush over there. Perfect. All right, now we know our river comes around. All that fog back there. All that fogginess. Right, we can't really tell where our river really starts yet. So, and you can see why now we've painted this much darker down here around the bottom to start. All right, we got our bits coming in from the side. We might as well just take a bit of that land. Just start throwing it in. Over here. There we go. Now can you see where the land begins? Got our river that wraps around. It's gonna come down around through here. see what it looks like. So far, a bit of I love doing this with black to start or you know your dark mixture. It just gives you this cool kind of shadow. This cool kind of shadowy look to the base of your water. And then when you run your your white across with it, then uh, it'll look really neat. All right, we're pulling it out sideways just because we know we're gonna have some ripples coming through our our water here. I mean, we're gonna have ripples in the the river as well, but might as well put a couple of those in. All right, just using our the same color we made all these trees out of. We don't have really much of a color palette today, right? So, <laughs> same color, using the same color for this painting. All right, don't even worry about big dark areas like that. Because when we come back with the water, like, right, the liquid white, the actual water, it's going to mix in, it's going to change color, it's going to get lighter and darker, and you're going to really love it. Okay, now for over here. Maybe just add that little bit of color so we can see that our land, right? Now we can sort of see this far off kind of misty colored land back here. So our water's gonna wrap around and then come down around this way. That's why all this fog is kind of just looming itself over the river. Okay, pretty simple here. I'm gonna take our liquid white, which I like to keep in an old, you know, this is the top of a liquid white jar. And uh, so I like to use that just to put a little bit in, that way I'm not diluting, you know, or ruining my liquid white by putting a brush full of color on it. Just put a little bit, it's like a little Petri dish. All right, a little bit of water. Remember, you wanna be very straight with water. 
and just keep working at it, coming down in these different lines until it starts to look like water to you. All right, but you can't have it all crazy like, and you don't want it to all be the same, right? That's not what we're here for. We want to have all these differences and these cool rapids, right? And again, this water, when it dries, will feel like water. You'll get all these bumps and humps and, and it's really awesome. I just, I love using so much texture when I paint. Cause I mean, even some of the times the texture will shine its own shadow. You know, if your paint is thick enough, it will cast its own shadow if it's in the right light, which is really neat to me. Coming in. You can see how this white is starting to change this black to gray, different bits of blue, different bits of, uh, of crimson in there. And let's see what it looks like on the camera. Oh my. How about this side? Oh man. That's a looking good, guys. That's a gonna be a good one. I love this one. All right, we're gonna come around where our black little water line was, right? And again, it doesn't have to be the same across everything. You don't want it to be the same. Don't want it to look the same. It doesn't need to be the same thickness, right? You just want it to, you want it to be different. A little scene on the side for the buyer. Just like so. I know I'm boring you guys it's over here, I know. Alright. Now the problem is you just don't want to overdo it, right? You want to have these differences. But you don't want to overdo it and put in too much. And it's hard because it starts looking really cool. And then you you sit there and you go, well, dang, I should have, I really should have stopped, you know, back at this point or... There we go. And so it's, I mean, it's hard. I, I know. All right, what I'm doing now is just taking the last little bit of dark that I have and just darkening up some of these areas a bit more. And all that does is, to me, just makes it, gives it more shadow, more depth, more realism, right? I love shadows. I love shadows almost more than I love highlights. All right, don't get mad. It's just like when you go look at something, it's never the exact same color everywhere. You've got to have all these differences in color, right? How many times is that? Seven, eight? All right, now the snow comes in, right? All this crazy snow that we like to use in Josh's paintings. All right, I just did it very lightly back there because I know I'm going to have, you know, big, thick, bits of snow that are up here that we can either use with the brush or the palette knife, however you want to do it. But again, even with the white, make sure you've got these differences in color as you come down, right? It's not all going to be white. You're going to have these little dark areas and lighter areas. And that's what's going to make somebody want to get your painting, you guys. Okay, you don't want to have the same colors all over the damn place. All right, time out while I get some more paint. All right, we've gone back for more Thalo Blue, uh, Lizard Crimson and Black. The Midnight Black, or Noir, or whatever you want to call it. Depends on the, on the brand you're using, right? Depends on the brand. All right, we're going to come in over here, and just against the side of this, we're gonna leave some really dark shoreline, right? There we go. Just a bit of darkness. 
help everybody see. I know it doesn't make any sense. A bit of darkness to help me see. Now we've got this edge that we can play with, right? What's it look like if we just went like this? Just pulled down some snow. Since we got all this white out anyway. And all we're doing is just pulling it over with the knife just like we would on the mountain. Getting it to break in different places. And that's really all we really need. Just like that. You get this real messy bit of snowfall, right? The more you pull it, the more it's gonna mix with that purple that's underneath, and it's gonna change, but you wanna have these differences in color between your whites, right? You don't need it all the same. You can even put a bit of dark in there and it'll look like uh, rocks and stuff, right? And then again, we can go back over it very lightly. Just pull it down just so we have these differences. We've gotta have a difference. Differences in color or no one's gonna buy your art. At least that's how I think. Okay. All right, what are we looking at here? And this happen, this bit, we're just gonna go back in and just fix little areas where, you know, we think there would be a little bit of shadow, maybe that comes in underneath, you know, that bit of snow back there or whatever. You decide what it looks like. it is your painting, right? It's your painting, so you decide what it looks like. All right, we got that bit back there. Little bits are bugging me back here. Nice foggy bank. You can even do something back there like a like a real far away rock or something. Maybe we can put back in there. Right on the side of the See what that looks like. And if we don't like how it looks, then we just blend it out. But I don't mind it. it doesn't look bad. Maybe it needs to be a bit darker back there. do that we need to have it a little bit wider back here like the not wider but whiter and that way we know there's some land back there kind of holding it up but it's just the very littlest bit you don't want it to be too too noticeable right we want to have a we want it to be noticeable but we don't want it to be too noticeable That's where our land lives back there. So we got the water crashing off of it up front and back there. And that kind of finishes off our, our little raging river. I like that rock back there though. Maybe we could even do another one. 
another little bit down towards the water, right? And there's a bigger one over here. Kind of help tie the rest of those ones in. You never know until you paint it, right? So, paint that sucker. Don't be afraid. Put a little bit of white highlights on him. Get this guy over there. Because it's all snowy all the time. There we go. And you just make it up until you, you like the way that it looks, right? I mean, we could keep making more rocks forever. We could do tons of rocks back there. Right, but... I want to have it this spooky look to it, you know what I mean? Spooky look. I think you guys know what I mean because otherwise why would you follow me or subscribe to my channel if you didn't know what I meant? There we go. And you just mess about with it until you like the way that it looks. Remember that. It's all about what you want it to look like. Not what I want it to look like, not what mine looks like. But what yours looks like. All right, why don't we give this bit over here some land. All right, it's got its little bit that's already come down. So we'll give them a little bit of texture to sit on. And all we're doing is just pulling that black, blue, and crimson mixture down at this angle. And that's just giving us a little bit of dark color down here where we can lay our, our, uh, Lay our snow on top of, right? Alright, over here. We get this very light blue colored snow. And again, we're not we're not touching everything, right? We're not going over everything. We're leaving the shadows, is what I'm trying to say. Right? Gonna leave some shadowy bits. And I want this snow to have uh, this snow, this snow to have this blue tint with it, because it's in the shadow behind these trees. So I'm gonna get this blue hue. Even take some of these, throw them over here. All right, different bits, different colors, differences in color, guys. Now we've got these. It's a blue shadowing, just little different bits of color inside of our, our snow. Right, come back, maybe we'll put a little bit of white, since we can't have all the same snow, right? We don't want it to be all the same. How many times does Josh say that? Differences in color, guys. That's gotta be like nine or 10 or 15, however many times we've said that today. All right, there we go. Now we got these different colors. I like this, I like this blue. Then we do the whole thing in the shadow, man. Do the whole dang piece in the shadow. Let's see. All right, that's looking good. All right. Shadows back there. Get a shadow under our rocks. gonna take a step over to the side and have a look at it get your happy little landscapes hats etsy.com slash shop slash happy landscape art right all right let's do what shall we do Trying 
get my trying to get my foul grat. I don't want to have it be too noticeable, you know what I mean? I want you guys to even wonder what these things are in the back back there. You don't know. You don't know what's back there. Come over our little land bit right here, ruin it. There we go. You don't know what's back there, nor do I, it's okay. We do a big giant boulder that lives down here in the front. All right. We're gonna scrape off all that extra white paint. That's a ton of paint. I want this guy to be nice and dark. Nice dark little colored rock up here. All right, pull it down so it's easier to make our texture on. Let the whole back side be in shadow. and the front would be in white. Okay, sorry, I get stuck in what I'm trying to do and I forget to talk. I right, still haven't mastered that technique yet. I just, I keep feeling that if it's like recessed in over here, that it's gonna be a little darker. So I just keep adding color until I like the way that it looks. It's recessed in back behind this little peninsula back here you would figure there would be a little shadow okay right there as we get paint all over ourselves right all right it's time to highlight these suckers here okay we're gonna get our liquid white down in with our thalo blue and that, that white that we had down here initially. All right, we're gonna go through and we're gonna come and just touch, right? And whatever sticks is gonna stick, whatever doesn't, isn't going to stick. All right, it's pretty much all you need. Just like that, very easy. Used one side of the brush. Now we can come back over here for this guy and use the other side. Same thing, just touching and moving down in this Z-shaped pattern, right? The further and further we get down, the less and less highlights we need to see. Come back, get a little bit more liquid white on our micro size fan brush, right? Gotta have these micro size if you want them to look like this. Amazon.com slash shop slash happy landscape art, right? Come in just very lightly. And again, we're not trying to cover all the shadows. You, this is where you're gonna make your tree, right? You gotta make your branches out of this brush right here. All right, put a little bit of blue up on the top. And then again, we're just touching. Whatever sticks is gonna stick. It doesn't need to be the whole tree. Don't need to see everything. Because these trees are very much in the shadow and uh, you're not going to get a whole lot of highlights from them anyway. Just 
wash off that little brush for now. <clears throat> I haven't washed the brushes once in this whole painting. Besides right now. Got the blue with the uh, with the liquid white and our thalo blue, and then we're just going to come up and touch on our bushes, and that's it. Whatever sticks is going to stick. I'm just going to touch a few times, and that's that. All right. All we want to do is touch a couple times. And that is really it, because you will cover up this whole thing very quickly. There we go. So now we've got all these little millions of little tree branches covered in our little snowy highlights. And it looks fantastic. Keep them nice and dark around the bottom though. So I'm just going back and adding in a little bit of that dark color. And the reason you do that is because then you can go make a bunch of sticks and twigs that are just holding everything up inside this sucker. Right from our dark areas. And shoot, you can have one come off the side over there. It's like a little piece of grass that grew out on the edge. Bam, just like that. Imperfections, right? Doesn't always have to look perfect. All right, now we're gonna come in and let's see what we're gonna do here, guys. No, I don't really like that little recessed area right there. So we'll just fill it back full of snow. Okay, let's take a second to wash these brushes off. It's looking pretty good. I really like how the trees came out. Love the fog. Love everything about it. Just add on a little bit of my blue highlights down here. looks as though there's like a little bit of a shelf right in there. It just comes out like that over here. It gets a little bit darker. shelf where it kind of drops off. See what I mean? Maybe this is a bit of frozen ice that uh, hasn't been covered up yet or hasn't been melted. Or it could be more of our river. 
totally up to us what we want to do with it, right? So we'll come in and make more river. liquid white, throw in some waves, some little crashers. Some little white caps. I crash up against our little beach. <clears throat> Looks good. So, and the cool thing about this painting is it's so super textured, you're going to be able to feel all of these when they dry. It's going to be fantastic. All right, now we've got all the rest of this black, red, and crimson that we've got to use. I don't know if we want to make it like that other painting was. The one that keeps selling, we want to make it like that. And that one's got this big honking branch that comes in. You're like, oh my God, Josh, what did you just do? Just trust me. Big old honking branch that comes in from the side. These branches that come down from the top. Right? Make them whatever shape you want to make them. You don't need to use a fan brush, obviously. <clears throat> now we can come in and use our liner brush here. And get our branches to actually go off of the canvas, that would be cool. Just using this filbert brush to make it a bit, get my perspective right. Sometimes that fan brush bounces all over the place, you know what I mean? All right, let's see what that looks like. So we're gonna take our little tiny micro size liner brush. You can use your script liner from Bob Ross, but I like these little Meaden as you can tell, my easel's a Meaden, but uh, these Meaden micro liner brushes, which you can find on my Amazon shop, amazon.com slash shop slash happy landscape art. But they really are super small and help you get all these real fine details on your branches and stuff. Really fine little details, fine little branches that come out. And they are awesome. All right, all we're really doing is putting out a little tree, sort of reaching out into the forest, right? Covering up all those foggy areas that we made. And it's sort of like we're back here, sat underneath this tree, looking at, uh, looking out from underneath it. Some of these branches come down here. Yeah. And if you cut them into your water, it's going to make, it's going to push everything back, right? Like it's back behind these branches. You cut them a little bit into your water. Just make sure because the water is super wet and, and thin. So you don't want to go too crazy. There we go. And there's a big bit of branch that lives up here. Do it, just kind of coloring it in with this liner brush. And this could take the longest time out of your, you know, your painting. It could be the longest bit of it. Trying to make all these little branches 
come together, you know what I mean? But take that time, because it's, once you get them all done and all, you know, filled with leaves, or in this case, we may leave them bare because it's winter time. But once you get all these little branches in there, you're gonna love it. So just stick with it. Take the time and just start crisscrossing all these different things back there. Just crisscross them. I have to make sure the edges of them, you know, the ends are pointy and it's thick around the bottom, right? Otherwise it's gonna look funny. Trust me, I've done it. I don't tell you guys this stuff for no reason. It could be like some of these other guys who don't even talk and they just paint. They don't tell you when, when they made a mistake, what happened this time that they did this or that time. And they just don't say anything. I'll be like those guys. I can hear y'all going, no, you're all so, you're so awesome, Josh. Don't change, don't change. All right, you had me at hello. Come in, just make that a little bit thicker. This guy's coming off that way. Got these branches just tangling, intertangling, intertwining. Intertwine the tangle. Again, this part can take the longest out of your whole painting, so stick with it. You guys can fast forward me if you want, but when you're doing your own, you gotta stay with it, man. Start crisscrossing all these, it's gonna look really neat. It's gonna look neat. So just trust me and stick with it. Eventually we're not gonna be able to tell which one of these branches is coming from which side. You know what I mean? Where is it coming from? Which one is connected to which? It's like one of those crazy puzzles. And with those puzzles and you, you start with the rope and you go to the side, I don't know how to do them. Gonna be like that. You start with these crazy puzzles and then you have nowhere to finish. Alright, we'll come down this way. Trying to figure out what I should do, guys. Trees are a crazy thing. Just the different ways that they can grow however they want. That's what life's about, being a tree. I like this one like that, you guys. Now what I wanna do, I wanna get those dark colors, mix them up again. And then we're gonna come back in and just leave a little bit of texture and color on our bushes. Remember, doing it on the bottom, Right, It'll give us a, a shadow that we want to mess with. And again, this thick is so, the paint is so thick, you'll be able to feel these trees. When it's dry, you'll be able to feel it, which is crazy to me. Cut that one off the side over there, just with the palette knife. Right, just on our biggest, thickest bits. We're just kind of touching and pulling away. And that's gonna give us all this texture to this tree. This tree trunk, this branch. Branch, my man. And it gives it all these crazy like imperfections too which is one of Josh's biggest things. Imperfections, differences in color. 
to scream it from a mountaintop for you guys. Differences in Kalur. If you're from, uh, you know, Europe, Kalur. Differences in Kalur. All right, do that over there. Like this, and now you can see just with that thickness of paint, we're getting different colors, different shadows. All sorts of differences in here. And it's gonna be this nice, gigantic, thick tree branch that you'll be able to feel when you're done. We might as well use all of it because we've got all this extra paint. Different colors and different stuff. This one's a bit more crimson than the rest. nice crisp lines with your palette knife but we can do it around here right with this big scraggly tree and uh, it turned out looking really really good really really good we can take the last bit of our brown and chuck him in here there we go and just like that guys Got a finished painting, nice gnarly looking tree over here on the side. Got this river that cuts through, got all this water, all the snowfall. It just really looks great. Oh, I love this one. Love how this one came out. There we go. <clears throat> you guys know I love my differences in color. So that's what we did today. <laughs> and just sort of went crazy. Do. We'll sign the sucker over here in the water. I love these big, thick, you know, Series 3 Pro Series canvases. You got to get these. You can find them in my Amazon shop, amazon.com slash shop slash happy landscape art. You can find those. They're stretched very tightly. You know, you it, it's just a, it's a much better canvas. And they know it. They know it's better. That's why they charge you more money for it. Just wanted to come in and give this guy just a little bit of love. Just a little love for this old guy back here. A couple little branches here and there. The more little details you do, the better off it's going to be, right? So put your little details in there. In this case, we're using the uh, the brown because we've done run out again of the other stuff. So just use the brown and it'll give you a little difference in color. And somebody will see that and be and appreciate it. That's what art is. It's about appreciating what you've done as the artist, you know, to, to help them put something cool on their wall, right? So take the time, do the work. Add the branches, do all that. It just ends up looking really good. And some of our other paintings we covered over these branches, and this one we're just gonna leave it, you know, just how it is, just nice and bare. A couple little bits off here and there, and it looks fantastic. And if you don't already have a yardstick, grab yourself a yardstick. They are really 
awesome for just being able to rest your hand on while you're trying to paint just a small little detail like your little family of birds or something in the back. All right, it helps you rest it against your canvas or your easel or your canvas or whatever you're putting it on. And then you don't have to float your hand over doing these little tiny details, you know, that you could mess up on. You get a yardstick, really helps out. All right, well, that's it, guys. I really enjoyed how this one came out. I hope you guys did as well. We can't fix that a little bit. I always got something to look at when I'm done here. Always, every time. Never get it all on the video. Okay, so I hope you guys like this painting. Uh, you know, follow along with my channels, subscribe to my YouTube, like me on Facebook, Instagram, you know, Twitch, whatever. Everything that there is, I have a, <laughs> a profile on. So, again, showed you guys how to do these big gnarly trees, far off forest, mist, you know, really textured, very perfectly high lit uh, evergreen trees, right? So if you guys want to learn how to do any of those things, stick with me. And the more and more you paint with me, the more crazy we're going to get, right? And the better you're going to get. So, uh, again, I hope you guys had a great time. And uh, stick with me. We're going to come back. We're always live on Sundays, so come back to the channel Sunday, and uh, you'll get a surprise, and you never know what we're going to paint, right? So, all right, you guys take care. Have the rest of a good day. We're going to say goodbye just like this. Bow! Somebody said I would look more professional without my hat on. So I did the ancient aliens guy look, right? How professional is this? Hey guys, come paint from a crazy person. Hi guys, that's Josh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> just do that. And then what? And then we can just paint, right? We we'll just do that and we we'll paint. Hey guys, blah, 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 blah. That's paint. Hey guys, Josh, Happy Little Landscapes, back again in the studio. It's looking fantastic in here. And today we've got an 18 by 24 inch canvas that we're gonna add to the decor, right? Until it sells, waits, it sits there and dries, waiting on Etsy for one of you guys to buy it, right? <laughs>